What's going on guys, your boy Fluff here. Today we're talking about ways you can optimize your Corpse Mancer to make sure you're clearing rifts in under two and a half, two minutes, and GR70 in under three minutes. So, let's get into it. First I wanna thank you guys for all the support you've been giving. Crazy amount of views on the Corpse Mancer, tons of likes, tons of subscribers over the past few days. Really appreciate it. Tons of feedback, tons of ideas. We love all that juice. I also want to start out by saying I've tried a ton of variations. Guys, I've been playing Corpse Mancer like nonstop for the past three days. Tinkering and playing with lots of different items, build ideas, uh, comments that you guys suggested on YouTube. But first I want to talk about what I've really landed on for T13 and GR65 and under to get those sub three minute clears 100% of the time. Even less on T13, you can get two minutes. The items you see me wearing are pretty much gonna be the items I'm showing on the Diablo fans guide. If you haven't gone and read that or looked over it, definitely go and do that. I've had a lot of people come in and say, you know, Relina's Shadow Hook, gonna be a lot more damage. You're gonna be hitting harder. Um, you know, Mirne hits harder. Corpse Explosion hits harder. Um, Wreath of Lightning is gonna hit harder. And it is a really solid choice. But in my experience, I've achieved much faster clears overall using a one-hander and lost time. So I would really recommend wearing either a really good Ingyam or a really good Tragul's Corroded Fang and cubing the one that you have the worst version of. Now for stats here, damage, intelligence, cooldown reduction, no brainers. We're also not worried about the secondary maximum essence because we're not running the Shadow Hook at all. For us the gear, we're really focused on cooldown reduction. Anything over 45% is almost perfect. Now with the lost time, um, you have a couple different variations you can do here. You definitely want crit chance, you definitely want cooldown reduction, you definitely want that maximum movement speed. And then you can either go area damage for even more damage, or if you find that you're a little bit more squishy than you'd like to be, you can run Vitality and get your health pool up. I did find that having under around 550, 525k health uh, really causes this build to be more squishy than it actually appears just because your health pool is so low and a lot of things might one shot you not necessarily one shot you but like say charging mobs if you get hit by two or three at the same time which happens a lot uh you will die so you really want to have over you know 500k health if possible the belt i really like witching hour for t13 and under 6 gr65 because we have so much crit chance here you see we are on 55 if we have you know all gear statted the way it should be so this brings our crit damage up to 516 which is really really nice and i can definitely tell the difference when i swap it out shoulders i really like invite cooldown reduction those are a must uh for that last set you can either go corpse explosion or uh, area damage. Whichever one you happen to roll will be just fine. For the helmet, um, an ancient one would be really good here because that vitality really goes a long way. But we want int, bite, crit chance, and actually preferably on the secondary, if you can get reduction to movement impairing effects, that's really, really good to have. Because you do get feared, stunned, frozen. It happens all the time in this build. So having that reduction is really, really nice. You can also get it on the secondary for some of your rings. If you can get it there too, that's great. You guys are gonna find it actually makes quite a bit of difference. The chest, we want int, bite, and life. You could swap out that life for corpse explosion if you find you don't need more health pool. Pants, invite armor, that's a no-brainer. Physical on any of these would be perfect on that secondary resist. And boots, invite armor with movement speed. Bracers, we want nemesis here. Uh, that's not really a negotiable. A lot of people suggest, you know, reaper's wraps and stuff like that to keep our essence high. Uh, but you really can't take off a nemesis, they're just too good. You could, if you wanted to, for T13 normal rifts, you could swap out the nems uh, for the pylons, but I've always hated doing that, so I just go nems all the time. And on this, poison, int, bite, crit chance is going to be the best. Necklace, uh, the johnstone, it's going to be way easier to roll than Wisdom of Kalan. Definitely try to get a johnstone first, probably. Something with crit chance, crit damage, and a socket. We would prefer to have poison here, but... This is the best we got. On the belt, invite, uh, crit damage are the most important three. If you have the opportunity to roll off the attack speed, I would go for something like life. For rings, we're still using unity, Brisbane sentence. Unity, we have a really well rolled one, so we went with this. You know, crit damage, crit chance, increased damage against elites. Again, if we can get the crowd control reduction on the secondary, that's great. Crispin Sentence, this is a really, really hard one to get to roll well. On ours, we have, you know, Int, Crit Damage, and Cooldown Reduction. And I think Attack Speed's a guaranteed roll, so getting something that's rolled well is going to be really hard to do. Then for the cube, again, whichever one you have rolled better, you want to wear. Uh, Ingyam or Tragul's Corroded Fang. For the armor slot, we're still using Grasp of Essence. It is the best in slot. 
500% increased damage for corpse explosion, absolutely cannot swap out. It's a must. And then for the jewelry shot, we're using Wisdom of Kalan. Now, before I get into the variations, I just want to talk about my GR70 spec. Literally, the only thing I change as I put on String of Ears instead of Witching Hour. String of Ears I just find to be a bit more consistent overall than wearing the Witching Hour full time. I find my survivability actually goes quite a bit up just wearing String of Ears alone. Now a case could be made for the Vigilant Belt if you don't have cooldown reduction up to 45%, but that's literally the only change I make for running GR70s. I'll also say that running GR65 and below is just easy mode with this build. You can just fly through it, two, two and a half minute clears. It's so fun, so fast. Anything above 65, you, you start to feel the squishiness. So again, that's why I swap out that string of ears. It helps just a little bit. But GR70 clears, they're going to be quite challenging. It is really, really fast. It's really, really fun. And it's actually, I think, great to be somewhat squishy in a GR70. You don't want it to just be like, you know, hitting the space bar and everything dies on your screen. You really want to be like focused in and trying to get the fastest possible clear you can get without dying. And I think that's what this set accomplishes. We can talk about some variations. Obviously, uh, the first and foremost request I get is how do I make this a grouping build? Because we can't wear Unity in a group, obviously. The only thing you really have to do is obviously drop Unity because that doesn't work in a group so you put ring of royal grandeur on and then you either wear the aquila and cube the grasp of essence or wear the grasp of essence and cube the aquila you can also run golem skin breaches here and if you still find you're really really squishy you just want to wear dainty's binding and swap out your curse or decrepify. Now dizzying curse is going to cause your Christmas sentence to proc a lot more. I like opportunist, it gives you a bit more movement speed juice. And even borrowed time can be nice because you can curse a massive group of enemies and then pop land the dead. And that's going to bring your cooldown quite a bit lower. Now again guys, if you do need to wear a Quill is Curious for this build, you have to drop Breading Maldiction or Dark Reaping. Absolutely have to. And then you also have to wear the Tragul's Corroded Fang instead of the Yingyang because you have to wear a scythe. Again, guys, this is the setup where we will eventually run out of essence. I think by far and away, this is the best setup overall. It lets us run Spreading Maldiction instead of Dark Reaping, which gives us just a little bit more damage, and you really notice it against those elite packs when you're one or two corpses away from an elite die. Now again, guys, if you don't like that, you can pick up Dark Reaping and make sure to wear a scythe. But I recommend trying it. Uh, it really works out because every single time you start a GR, your essence gets filled to full. So even if you find yourself, you know, doing normal risks and you're running out of essence, you could either just go do a GR real quick, you could recreate the game, you could die. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend the last one. But again, I think that the low essence build is the best. Now again, guys, I haven't seen any builds out there can run T13 in two, two and a half minutes and under. Not even close. Bone Mancer, which is quite popular and quite good, does average slower overall than this. But these are just my findings, guys. I encourage other people, if you have videos of anyone clearing faster than you know two and a half minutes on any other build, please post it in the comment section. I would love to see it, love to check it out. But from my research and the videos that I've watched and other streamers that I've watched, um, this is by far and away the fastest I've seen for T13 and really GR70 and under. Now going above GR70 with this, um, you definitely would have to probably either cube or wear the shadow hook with Tragul's and drop Ingyam altogether. I've done GR75 in about five minutes doing that setup. Also dropping any belt for Dainty's Binding to get more toughness. I personally like to farm a lot of, you know, GR69, Y69. You can level a ton of gems to level 70 and have all these gems on standby for when you need to despair your gear. While my gear is getting better and better, it's still not perfectly optimized. So these clear times really speak to the build itself. Not necessarily the person or the gear playing it. But that's really it, guys. Uh, if you see any faster clears out there or you think you have some great ideas, um, please post them in the comments below. We love all the feedback. And please do, you know, give some evidence. <laughs> Don't just say, you're a noob, this build is faster. Today in this video, I'm going to give a breakdown of how I run this build, what it looks like, things to keep in mind. It's just a pretty standard, you know, GR69 clear, and I think just under three minutes. And again, guys, we average three to four minutes every time. We're barely ever over four minutes. As always, guys, like, subscribe, come over to Twitch, ask your questions. Peace out. All right, so to start out the riff, I usually try to get bone armor up as fast as possible. Sometimes it's actually really hard to do. But I'll actually pop Land of the Dead almost immediately. 
just to make sure everything's frozen and I can just bone arm them easily. Also helps me get that ingyam juice really, really fast. So I can start porting around the rift as fast as possible. If possible, you want to try to build up those stats in Macabre. But sometimes you just need to move on as fast as possible. Here you can see me throw in the golem before I actually arrive at the elite pack. This lets me just go in and spam corpse explosion as fast as possible. It really helps to reduce some of the damage I take a lot of the time. Here I kind of spam bone armor to kill all the trash that's around the mob. Uh, just in case my corpse explosion doesn't quite kill him fast enough. Here I can see that elite pack pulling in real fast, so it's a perfect time to pop Land of the Dead. Plus I have shielding. Again, just move around the map as fast as possible, trying to find elites. There again, you can see as I teleport in, I've already used the command golem skill, so my guy's jumping in just as soon as I teleport for fast corpse explosions. And it's just moving as fast as you can. Move, move, move. Go, go, go. Where's the next elite pack? Here we pop land of the dead because we didn't think we would have enough corpses on the ground to finish them off. Here we kind of get stuck, so we had the corpse explosion. This we just use the golem. Blue packs, usually the golem's going to be enough, especially if, if you have stacks of macabre. Here we get a nice little conduit pylon. And it's just port, port, port. Very rarely in this build do we stop to kill large packs of trash unless it's just super, super juicy. These guys are spread out, but it's actually okay because there is a ton of trash. So we're comfortable we're going to be able to kill this guy anyway. Now anytime this happens, a channeling pylon, you know that you just beat the game. At this point, the Rift Guardian should just throw in the towel, show up, and give you your loot. Now channeling pylon with you know over 45% cooldown reduction basically lets you recast Land of the Dead after every elite kill. Here we pop it again, we have it up for him, and then boom, you can see it's already back before the cooldown's even gone. Now here we kind of take a gamble and pop it again. It's always great to uh, pop land the dead when you have the channeling pylon up because it will come back very fast And then it just kind of works out that we found an elite and in gown prox again And boom we have a fresh land of the dead for the guardian You always want to try to have land of the dead for the guardian because it can be pretty slow without it But really around 90% you want to kind of slow down. But yeah, that's it. So fast so fun best build in the game I think currently just loving necromancer corpse explosion right now. Peace out